finally, let us study k-means in Spark and its remaining limitations. k-means is implemented only in the RDD API of MLlib in Spark, the k-means module. In the ML API, that is the data frame API for machine learning in Scala code. I find over here that means the data frame API. And we look at the clustering, look at the k means module in Scala. And in line 31, you will see this import Apache Spark ML right? So that means import the RDD API from MLD, right? So, and dot k means, right? You can see it is actually importing the RDD API for k means, right? So then you go to the, the RDD API for machine learning in Scala MLD. In the, at the top, you can find the definition of k means, right? So k means clustering with k means plus plus like initialization, right? So with k means parallel algorithm. So let us look at the k means API. So k is the number of clusters. The maximum iteration is when we will stop the iteration, right? So even if there's no convergence. And uh, there's a parameter called initial initial mode, right? So that's an initialization mode. Has two options. One is random, like in traditional k-means in the Lloyd algorithm, or using k-means parallel. Because this is a uh, spark is primarily for big data, so the k-means parallel is the default initialization method. Another parameter is called initial step, right? So that is uh, the number of steps in the k-means parallel algorithm. The default is two, right? So the default is two. And if you go to the code in line 375 and uh, 76, you can see that it says on each step, sample two times k points, right? So on average with probability proportional to their square distance from the centers, right? So therefore, our oversampling factor L, right? So equal to two times K, right? Because you are sampling two K points, right? Two times K. And uh, that, uh, the next primary tolerance, that is a threshold for checking convergence. So the next one is a random seed and there's a distance measure, right? Because we are talking about the squared distance, right? squared, sum of squared distance, right? So, but how to measure the distance, right? So there are two options. One is using Euclidean distance, which is the default. Another is, is to use the cosine distance, right? So for vectors, cosine distance for vectors. That's the two choices. There's also a, weight column option, right? So you can weight the different points, right? Give them different importance. And uh, a, this code, right? Also reminds you uh, to cache, right? So you need to remember, you need to cache your data for high performance because this is, uh, this uh, will have multiple passes and lots of iterations, so you can see the code in the beginning of the definition, it says, this is an iterative algorithm that we make multiple passes over the data. So any RDD given to it should be cached by the user, right? So therefore you should cache your data when you use k-means. And if you look downstairs at 200 plus, it also says train a k-means model on the given set of points, data should be cached right, for high performance because this is an iterative 
algorithm. Okay, so this is how you can learn more from the source code. Okay, so this is from the source code. Okay. And uh, the last uh, subtopic we are going to talk about is uh, limitations of k-means. Right? So we talk about k-means parallel and k-means plus. They were proposed to improve the initialization to tackle the scalability and also the slow convergence, right? But there are other problems that cannot be solved by the k-means parallel or k-means plus plus. Basically, k-means um, has problems when the clusters are of different sizes. For example, here, some clusters are very big compared to some other clusters that are very small, right? So they are of different size. This one is more like uh, four times the small cluster. And also when they have different densities, you see, for example, here, this one is has a low density, but these two has high density, right? So these two has high density. Another case is when we have non-globular shapes, right? So that's a non-round shapes, right? So like this one for this shape. For these three scenarios, right? So k-means will have problem. If you run k-means, for the first example, this is what you are going to get, right? So you will not get the desired clusters with this one, the big as one, and the small as one, right? So what you have will be something like this, right? So the middle big cluster will be divided, right? So into three clusters, right? So because it is too big, right? So it is uh, much bigger than the other two clusters. So when you compute the distance, the, there's uh, more voles from there, right? So both the voles have been split to the other two clusters. So this is not a, a good cluster. And for the case of high density and uh, high density uh, and low density as right? so a mixed density, and uh, if you run k-means clustering, most likely you, what you have is like this, right? You have two clusters. The low density region will be separated into two clusters and the high density regions will be considered as one cluster, right? So because k-means is distance based, right? So we just look at the distance. And for this case, right? For this case, if you run k-means, right, unfortunately, right? So if you run k-means, because it's a uh, distance-based, uh, Euclidean distance or cosine distance, and basically this will be your clustering result, right? So therefore you see it's uh, not uh, um, good at all, right? So that is uh, totally wrong, right? So for the actual cluster. So k-means is not perfect, right? It has a, you cannot deal with these kind of scenarios, right? So, but how to overcome this kind of limitations, right? There are, of course, other kind of uh, algorithms such as spectral clustering, which we have covered in um, MLAI, but there are also other ways to deal with it. For example, you can use many clusters to find parts of clusters and then try to have a scheme to put them together, right? For example, for this, you can say, okay, I will find more than three, right? So I want to three, but uh, um, when you run k-means, you can specify more than three. Like in this case, it's like 10, right? So we have 10 clusters. And then you can do later, you can do some post-processing, right? Try to see whether some clusters can be grouped together, right? So you can see the small cluster is still considered as one cluster, right? So, and for this case, you also have uh, like uh, four, 10, right? So it has 10, we, Instead of three, we cluster into 10 clusters. So these two dense regions are two separate clusters and the, uh, one low density cluster has uh, eight, right? So it has eight clusters identified. Then you can do some post-processing to merge the, the small clusters over here, right? So, and for this one, if you, we have 10 clusters, so if we have K equal to 10, then we will, this, this will be what we have, this will be what we have. Uh, 10 small clusters, okay? Therefore, um, pre-processing and post-processing is also uh, both important for k-means, right? So 
in pre-processing, we should really normalize the data because k means is really the criteria is based on distance, right? Based on distance. If your data is not normalized, so certain variables, right? They may dominate the distance calculation. Right? So therefore you need to be careful. For example, if you use a um, kilogram for, for your uh, weight, right? So, and if you use gram, right? So it will be a very big number, right? So, um, and if you use a meter and a millimeter, right? So that'd be a very big, no, different, very big difference in the distance computation, right? So therefore you should really normalize the data, right? So unless you want to weight the different variables. And if possible, you should also try to eliminate outliers, right? So such, such va some values that are obviously wrong, right? So if it's someone's weight, right? If uh, there's a data entry error saying that uh, that person's weight is uh, for, uh, for uh, 60, uh, 600 uh, kilogram, right? So that, that would be uh, more like an outlier, right? It'd be 1,000 kilogram, right? So that would be more like an outlier, right? So you should really eliminate those kind of outliers. Otherwise, it will just uh, um, um, make noise and uh, make the clustering uh, have a very uh, abnormal behavior, right? So, um, and uh, for post-processing, we can eliminate small clusters that may represent outliers, unless, right, unless we are doing a anomaly detection or outlier detection um, problem, right? For example, credit card fraud or intrusion detection and so on. Right. Otherwise, um, unless we are doing that kind of uh, outlier detection or anomaly, anomaly detection where the small clusters are of interest, um, otherwise we should eliminate those small clusters, right? So, and we can also split those loose clusters um, with uh, those that we can examine if they have relatively high Square, sum of square errors, we can consider split them into more than one clusters. And uh, if there will be relative low SSE, right? So then we can consider, can maybe we can consider to merge clusters that are close to each other, right? So those are post processing scale techniques for K means cluster. So that's all for k-means, and, and we have learned a lot about uh, clustering. Um, and uh, here I want to acknowledge that some of the slides are adapted from the k-means parallel slides by the uh, author of uh, k-means parallel. And uh, I also take some slides from the book, Introduction to Data Mining. Right? So that's a very classic book on data mining, and including, uh, uh, so here are some references, including a Free chapter, right? So that chapter, um, chapter on clustering from this book, is a sample chapter, right? So you can download it for free, right? So it has eighty-eight pages, right? Just talk about clustering, and this is the Wikipedia page for Kimmins, and you can also look at the Kimmins plus plus paper published in 20, uh, 2007. and uh, this one is pub uh, pub was published in two thousand and twelve, right? So Kimmins parallel. And there's also a, a YouTube video on the author's presentation on the paper, right? So you can watch it if you have interest to learn more about Kimmins Parallel. Okay, so that's all for scalable Kimmins clustering. Okay, so the next video will be on the lab.